aircraft behind me is the B-29 boxcar. This airplane ended World War II. It dropped an atomic bomb on Nagasaki on August 9th, 1945. This airplane is significant because even though it dropped the second atomic bomb, the war wasn't ended after the first bomb was dropped. And there was a lot of discussion about, well, should we drop the second bomb? Should we not? Um, but it was pretty clear that the Japanese were going to continue to fight. The option uh, that was left other than dropping the atomic bomb was a massive invasion of Japan, which would have resulted in millions of casualties among the Allies and among the Japanese. So the decision was made to drop this second bomb. And actually, the target for that bomb was supposed to be a Japanese city called Kokura. But it turns out that there was smoke obscuring the city from a bombing raid that was nearby on that day. And the instructions were that they were to be able to actually see the target, not use radar bombing, which they had that capability. So after three runs over Kokura and running low on fuel, the decision was made to attack the alternate target, which was Nagasaki. As the crew approached Nagasaki, it was covered in clouds, and so they were a bit concerned, will they have to bomb by radar or just ditch the bomb in the ocean? But just as they were about to go over the city, the clouds parted, they were able to see the target, and they bombed visually. The B-29 was really a unique aircraft to begin with. It could fly farther, higher, faster, carry a heavier bomb load than nearly any bomber developed during World War II. It really was revolutionary. But the B-29s that were used for the, the atomic bombing raids were special B-29s. They had been specially modified to carry atomic bombs. The turrets that were on normal B-29s were taken off. The armor was taken off, so it lightened them. They could fly farther, a little faster, a little higher. They also modified the bomb bays to be able to carry these atomic weapons. Both the Fat Man and the Little Boy weighed about 10,000 pounds. The uh, B-29 boxcar carried the Fat Man bomb. And in fact, it really was the only bomber that the U.S. had at the time that could carry the Fat Man bomb. The crew was well aware of the gravity of the mission. They were involved in the two most expensive defense projects in World War II. The B-29 cost $3 billion in 1945 dollars to develop and build, and the atomic bomb cost about $2.2 billion to develop and build. So we committed huge national resources to develop both of these weapons. They knew the brutality of the war. They knew that it was dragging on and on. At the same time, these were professionals. That said, they had a lot of problems on the mission. Before they even took off, they had a problem with the fuel transfer pump, which meant that they weren't going to be able to utilize all the fuel in the airplane, but they still had to carry the fuel. Then, as they were approaching Japan, they were supposed to meet up with a photographic aircraft that would document the mission. They orbited for 45 minutes, waiting for this photographic airplane to show up. It never did. So they're low on fuel. They go to Kokura, the primary target. It's, it has smoke over it. They can't bomb visually. They make three runs. The fuel's getting lower and lower. Uh, in the end, though, they were able to get to Nagasaki and bomb visually. But even after that, they didn't have enough fuel to get back to their home base. So they had to divert to nearby Okinawa, where they were able to land. But as they were coming in a final approach, one of the engines ran out of fuel and stopped. And then after they landed, as they taxied to the end of the runway, another engine stopped. So that's how close it was with their fuel reserve. I think one of the big legacies in particular for the Air Force is that the justification to have the Air Force as a separate service, which happened a couple years after the war ended in 1947, is the concept that air power can be decisive. And one of the ways that air power is decisive is through strategic bombing. The strategic bombing in Japan absolutely devastated that country's industry. And in the case of the atomic weapon, there was no certainty that the war was going to end. The Japanese were massing to defend against a, an Allied invasion. The Japanese had amassed kamikaze aircraft. Uh, civilians were given anti-tank weapons to try and defend against a, a land invasion. What prevented that from happening? This aircraft prevented that from happening. That was decisive. And so just a couple years later, that just further amplified the need to have a separate service because air power indeed was decisive in this case.